DIY solar equipment is expensive. This solar panel cost $100. This charge controller cost $200. And this battery cost $30. And this battery costs $300. But what if you only have about $100 to spend? What sort of ultra budget solar panel setup could you build? And what could it even power? Time for some shopping. All right, we have $100 to spend. Is that enough? I'm gonna look for a 20 watt solar panel kit. That is gonna be the most affordable route. Ooh, look at this one. That is a pretty good price. $30. Let's look for like a 150 watt inverter to start. Oh, they're so cheap, my gosh. It doesn't have a way to connect to our battery, so we're gonna have to buy an adapter. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that, it's so cheap. Oh my God, and it has a fuse, that's cute. We need a bigger battery. That's what we need, 18 amp hour lead acid battery with slightly better terminals. I think that would make it a little easier to connect the things we have to connect because we just have alligator clips. And it says nuts and bolts, really. Proceed to check out. 96.54 with tax. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be a little over 100. 105. 105. After another hour of looking at alternatives, I decided that this setup was the best I could find. And even though I was a little over my target budget of $100, I just decided to go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. I am gonna place the order. Order placed. Now we wait for it all to arrive. And the box just arrived in the mail. So let's open it up and see what we've got. Okay, this is definitely our battery. It's very heavy. Okay, so a couple things in here. This is actually for another video where I do a $100 solar generator setup. So we're gonna put that to the side. This is our 150 watt inverter. And then these are the cables for connecting the inverter to the battery. Okay, and then here is our 20 watt solar panel kit. And that is it. Solar panel kit, battery, inverter, and some cables. All right, let's just start with the battery. I got a lead acid battery, a sealed lead acid battery, um, partially for price if I'm remembering correctly. Also, because for a system this small and this cheap, you're not gonna have long wires. So you're gonna be really limited in where you could set this system up. And it, the battery could experience freezing temperatures. So in that case, I just got a lead acid battery because lithium iron phosphate batteries shouldn't be charged below freezing. Let's open up the kit next. So this is a 20 watt solar panel kit, a very cheap charge controller, and then a pretty nice little solar panel that we got here with some connector cables. PWM um, for sure. And then we have the 20 watt solar panel, and then there are some connectors. Interesting, they have two ways of connecting the charge controller to the battery. Oh man, I'm just realizing. This doesn't have bolts, does it? Uh, I could have sworn that I read that in the, in the product description, but I'm seeing that it does not have any bolts. So I would have to provide my own, and I don't know if I have any that fit this, this, uh, these size terminals. So we'll see. And then we have the 150 watt inverter. It's a 12 volt inverter and very small. It has one outlet and two USB ports. Uh, so hopefully that works. It plugs into a car socket. So in order to be able to connect to the battery, I got this thing, which is like a little 12 volt adapter. That is everything. We have the battery, we have the inverter with the adapter cable, and then we have our solar panel kit. So technically we have everything we need, but 
you know, I'm looking at this and I am a little concerned that some of this might not fit together the way I was envisioning. But now it's time to take it all outside and see if we can set it up. Okay, I had to work with the wires a little bit, but I got them in there and I can see on the charge controller, the battery icon on the screen is now flashing, meaning that it's charging. The solar panel is charging the battery. So this system is complete, it's all working. And despite my initial worry, I was able to easily clip both sets of alligator clips to the battery terminals, but they are flimsy. So if you were to use this setup, I definitely recommend getting some bolts to connect the battery cables. But what can it power? Can it charge a phone? I'm gonna plug my phone in. Yes. Can it charge a laptop? Yes. Can this setup run a lamp? Oh, well, let's plug it in. Yes. And you're probably wondering how long can it run these devices for? Well, the easiest way to do that is to find the usable watt hour capacity of the battery and then divide it by the wattage of the device that you're trying to run. So in this case, this six watt LED bulb could run for about 18 hours off this battery. Can this setup run small 12 volt devices like this 12 volt mini fridge? Well, if you remember, we connected the inverter using this 12 volt socket. So if your 12 volt device has a 12 volt plug like this, then you just plug it in there and it turns on. A lot of you are probably wondering how long it will take the solar panel to charge the battery. One quick and dirty way that I've used to estimate this before is that a solar panel will produce on an average day around four watt hours per watt. But I've used small solar panels like this before and they never really seem to output near their rated wattage. So in this case, I would use a more conservative estimate like two to three watt hours per watt, which means on an average day, this 20 watt solar panel would produce around 40 to 60 watt hours. So for this battery with its capacity being what it is, it might take two to three days for the solar panel to charge it fully. Can it run a kitchen fridge? No, <laughs> this thing pulls up to 300 watts. So our fuse would blow if we connected it. And if we didn't have a fuse, it would overload the inverter. Same thing goes for the AC unit. Definitely not. It's a 150 watt inverter. So you might assume that this setup can run anything up to 150 watts, but this adapter cable has a 10 amp fuse so actually it can only run stuff up to 120 watts. I knew this when I selected the adapter cable and I was okay with it because you shouldn't discharge a lead acid battery of this size that quickly to begin with. If you wanted to get the full 150 watt limit from this inverter, then you'd have to pick up an adapter cable with a higher current rating. So we've found the limit of what this ultra budget solar panel setup can power. Given what you can run with it, what do you think of the price I paid for everything here? Do you think it's worth it or not? Either way, I'd love to hear why you think that in the comments below. Links to everything here will be in the description and in the comments below. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.